everybody welcome back to my channel now this is a video which I said I was going to do a few days ago um, but kind of only are just starting to get round to it now because I've been super busy um, so what I said I was gonna do is take the um, subculture palette by Anastasia which seems to be everybody's hit list at the moment and just do a few comparison blend swatches and what I mean by that is take a colour which is very similar to something I've already got in my collection and give you an example of the level of pigmentation and blendability um, in comparison one to the other so you can kind of see whether this is something that might work for you or not. Um, now you do have to be quite light handed with subculture, it's quite a powdery soft pigmentation to it, um, it's very pigmented but what I mean by that it's more of a pressed pigment than it is um, a eyeshadow so you do have to be very very careful in how you blend them and think about your different colour options it's a challenge it is a challenge but you can get some really beautiful looks from it um, now the first colour that I was going to take is Axis um, and a lot of people have had problems with the fallout of this one um, and the blendability because it is very pigmented um, if I just show you that, it is literally super, super pigmented. Now, the colour that I'm going to compare it to is this one here. So, as you can see, they are very similar. Um, and this is Plumage by MAC. Um, so, now, obviously, MAC eyeshadows are quite creamy as well, but less... Um, powdery but as you can see there the colour tones are very similar so I thought these two would be very good to compare against each other so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do two swatches on my arms and then I'm going to blend them out with um, some brushes and then you'll be able to see the difference in blendability okay so I'm just kind of taking my arm and I'm going to take a um Morphe, this is the M169 brush, um, which is synthetic haired, but it's got a nice tip to it and a nice blendable brush. So the first colour I'm going to take is Axis, and I'm just kind of patting my finger in, and I'm just going to do a one swipe swatch for you. And then, just so you can kind of see, I've just gone in very softly with the brush and literally that is the colour payout that you get. It's beautiful. Now I'm just gonna go in and very gently blend this. It is a very, very pigmented powder. Um, I haven't had any fallout while I've been doing this so far, but you never know. So you just kinda need to work it look at that payoff I mean obviously you're never going to cover an area that big but it is just beautiful I mean I wouldn't say it's patchy I would say you've still got that level of pigmentation there it's just slightly less there where I've just blended it out slightly um, and it's probably grabbing onto some dry bits of skin but there you go so that's those two there for you I'm then going to take as I said, um, plumage and dip my finger in that one as well. Okay, and then I'm going to put that one on my arm here. So slightly less payoff. And then I'm going to get my brush. I'm going to be slightly heavier handed because I know that the pigmentation on this isn't as good. Um, and that's it. So it doesn't give you as much colour at all. And as I'm trying to blend it, it is blending, but I'm having to press a lot harder into the skin. I mean, I would say I would go for this over this, but it just depends on how 
light-handed you can be because you can literally just dip into the pan and just get a huge amount of colour and play with it or you can be heavier handed with a MAC shadow and and then have to build it and work with it. Now this one is a slightly more bluey toned than this one um, and you can see that the colour here is, is a little more patchy than this one here as well. Um, but I mean I would over the two I think if you're gonna if it was just for like an all over colour I would probably go for this one um, because you can kind of build it and it's going to be it's going to travel less far so if you've got hooded eyes maybe that's going to be better for you but if you are looking for something where you're going to do a very bold vibrant playful look and be quite artistic um, then I would say subculture kind of wins on that front. Okay, so the next colour I'm going to take is All Star. Now, All Star does look quite ready in the pan, but it does come out a little bit more browny when you blend it. So with that in mind, I have taken my... Um, the most similar colour that I've got in my collection, which is um, this one here. So best friend, and this is in the Tartlet palette. Um, now, obviously, they're going to be very different formulas. Tartlet use um, Amazonian clay for their eyeshadows, whereas this one's main bulk ingredient is talc. So the formula is going to be different. So I am expecting there to be a blend difference, but I just want to kind of look at the pigmentation payoff and and how they compare kind of side by side. Okay, so we're just going to take a finger tap of all star which is there i'm just going to run that across my wrist here i might just take a little bit more there we go so that is all star and then i'm just going to do a brush swatch of that so i'm just going to go in very slightly and just see what that color payout is like So as you can see, it blends pretty far. <laughs> Whoa, <laughs> that is some blending. So I'm now going to take uh, Best Friend, which is in the Tartlet palette, and do a swatch of that one. Okay, so now for the sake of so I'd say it's still not quite as pigmented as this one here. You can see that you've got a lot more colour kind of moving down than you have in that one. Let me just take a brush swatch as well. Okay. I'm just going to do that here. Okay. And then just blend. So I'd say you get quite a good blend with this colour actually in comparison that one I think it's quite similar the amount as I said when it blends out it goes quite sheer so which is why I compared the two um, I think they're actually quite similar but the strength of pigmentation is still in this one if you look at this this looks washed out whereas this one looks a bit stronger I know the colors aren't exact dupes but it's as nearest I had okay guys so the next color I'm going to try this is actually quite similar. Um, I'm going to go in with Rowdy, which is like the pur dark purpley colour. And I'm going to compare it to, this is my um, uh, my Urban Decay Full Spectrum palette. And I'm going to compare it to, where is it? Let's just bring them side by side. This one here, Delirious. Now when you look at them side by side, I think this one's just a tiny bit 
lighter but not by much at all um so i thought they were two quite similar colors and you'd be able to do similar looks with those so i was interested to compare the two formulas and see how they come off and the amount of payoff you get from an urban decay in comparison to an as styles okay so i'm just going to go in with roundy and just do a little finger swatch here we go very powdery well, it's not too powdery actually. I'm saying that and I'm having to go da back in and double dip. Right, okay. So, I'd say that's quite a good, good colour payoff. And then let's try going in with the brush. So I've just done three little dabs. Okay, and very similar amount. And then we're just going to try blending that out now just out of curiosity I haven't put any primer or anything like that on my arms which I would normally do if I was doing my eyes but I just wanted to kind of give you guys a little comparison to how far this pigment travels because it's just insane okay I'd say that's quite a nice blend on that one. Okay, you can tell I've used this loads, can't you? <laughs> Not. <laughs> right, so um, we're going to take this colour here, as I said before, uh, which is Delirious. So I'm just going to run my finger in that and get some colour payout. Now, I think, actually, although it looks quite matte in the pan, it does have a bit of shimmer in it. So, hmm, let's try this. Okay. That doesn't look too bad. Let's try a little bit more. Sake of okay, so it is a little bit lighter when it comes out, but still a purpley tone, and purpley tones are quite hard to get the formula right of, apparently. Also, I hear. So let's try this one. Let's get the brush in there. Okay, so nice amount of pigment. Let's just pop that on the arm and see how far. Oh, this like blends out to nothing. <laughs> so, very blendable, but I'd say obviously it is much lighter. I'd say almost a little bit patchier. Can you see that in the middle there? Okay, I have got another purple I'm going to give a go with just to kind of make sure we're covering all our bases. Um, I would say this one is way better, you know, for if you're looking for like a, a deep dark look than this one here. I mean, it's, it's nice, but it doesn't look half as dark as it does in the pan. If you look at the pan there, this looks quite a lot lighter. I'd say it's almost this colour. So, hmm, let's try just for the sake of being devil's advocate i do have another sort of purpley tone in my mac cool neutrals uh, which is this one up here i don't think it's quite as dark but let's have a little oh, it's a little bit darker mm. let's try that one i know i've been going in with the same brush but you know Needs must. Hmm, okay. So I still think the colour payoff on, on this one is like far superior. Um, I mean, I can stretch it out, but it's just going to get lighter and lighter and lighter, whereas this one, it's really kept its consistency of colour all the way through. Okay, so the next colour I wanted to test out, which is quite popular, is this kind of fudge colour. Now for this one I've taken my Morphe palette, lots of people I know have the Morphe 35O, and I'm going to compare it to this shade here, which is bang smack in the middle of the pan, and looks probably the most comparative. So it looks very much the same sort of... Um, tone to fudge this one here um, let's just get on with it because I can't really hold this in the right place to kind of show you guys but we all know that the 35O is probably one of the most popular palettes okay 
So I'm just going to do a finger swatch of fudge. Um, some, as you can see, tend to pick up the colour on finger swatches slightly better than the others. I'm just going to run that down there. I think that's such a lovely colour. It's a really nice, neutral, warm brown. Oh, look at that kick up. Okay, so let's just blendy, blendy, blendy. So this blends beautifully and it's got a huge amount of colour payout. Really nice. Really like that. Okay, so next shade. Clean off my brush. Ooh. We're going to go in with, as I said, this colour here, which is the nearest I have in my palette um, in the 35O. Just this middle shade. So very similar, very similar. Um, I'd almost say this is still much more pigmented. Just looking at the swatches, you can kind of see that this is kind of trying to blend itself out already. Um, let's take, and that's got a little bit of kickback as well, but not as much. And then let's take this and blend it. Okay, let's just for the sake of argument, let's just go in again. Okay, so as you can see, the Morphe palette definitely is not a winner here. This colour is almost exactly the same, and the colour payout is it's not you can't even compare the two this is far superior you get much more pigment than you do on these two okay so because i'm quite pale skin there's no point me doing a lot of these other paler colors because they're just not going to show up on my skin very well and i don't have anything that is very similar to new wave or edge so the ones the other two that i really wanted to try out was dawn and cube electric there's no point comparing that to anything because it's so different however if people are having the problem with me like me with the color sealing itself on these two can I recommend a brush for you um, the brush that I recommend is the Morphe M431 now this is um, I think it's goat hair and this picks up the color so much better than a synthetic um, really really the payout on this is much better I don't know if I'm going to be able to show you but if I dig around in here a little bit okay and I pop that on my arm okay I know it's a bit flaky, but then if I take, let me take, oh, what should we go in with? There we go. So the most comparative I have is a Morphe M507. So if I take the synthetic, the like synthetic softer brush, um, and try and replicate the look, it just there's nothing, absolutely nothing. So I highly recommend this brush for this work so much better. Um, and if you really have a good play with it, um, you can get a really good look out of it. I've really enjoyed using this color with this brush. Okay, so we're gonna try um, Adorned and Cube. Now Adorned for me is just like one of these Holy Grail colors. Um, you can't really um, put it down or say anything bad about it because it's just, it's lovely. Um, it's one of those lovely kind of coppery, shimmery tones that's very buttery. Um, swatches really nicely on your finger. I'm just going to go in with a soft brush and then just bring it down a little bit more. As you can see, no no issues whatsoever. I'm gonna compare that one to my, one of my Morphe Copper Spice palette. Um, so we're gonna go in for 
this colour here. I don't think they've actually got numbers on these ones, so it's always a little bit disappointing with Morphe colours because you don't get a number. But they are still beautiful colours, so oh, look at that. I know it's a slightly different tone, but just so you can kind of see the comparison. Oh, blimey, okay. Take that soft brush again. Okay, and you do get slightly more fallout with this one. So the formulas look very similar. Um, I would say that I think they're they're almost exactly the same. There's no point really saying anything bad about either of them because they both work really well. Um, Obviously they're different, slightly different tones, but you know, you're going to get similar looks. This one's just a little bit deeper than this one. It's got a nice goldy sheen to it. I love this colour actually. Really nice. Okay, so just a quick check-in. Interestingly, the Copper Spice palette has actually left a stain on my arm, here and here. Whereas the, Morph um, the, the Subculture palette didn't. Uh, so that's interesting. I didn't know it did that. But after swatching it, as you can see, yeah, stains your skin. Watch out, guys. Um, anyway, so the last colour that I kind of wanted to get into is this colour cube. Now, a lot of people have said, do you know what, it's not very pigmented. And when you finger swatch it, you've got that very pink shift to it. Um, now, I actually have a dupe for this. So I'm just going to go in with my um, Morphe M431, which is a kind of stiffer brush, which I found kind of picks up this and electric a little bit better. And you do have to dig into it a little bit, but I just want to kind of show you. I'm going to just do it over this here. So you can get, you know, some payout from it but it's not great okay it's not my favorite color at all I don't love this color but as I said I do I do have a dupe for it um, and it's actually a really good dupe um, so this is the spring spoke uh, sorry it's really grubby the spring strobe spectrum palette by Zoeva um, and they do some lovely big pans um, and this one here at the bottom is a gorgeous pinky colour so if I just take a swatch of this now that is what that colour should be like I'm just going to put it up here so you can see the difference So you still get a slightly more pinker tone, but very similar. I'd say this one's a little bit more powdery, this one's a little bit more buttery, but it's the same sort of effect. I think this one's just so much easier to work with than this one. Oh yeah, not a big fan of Cube, have to say it, just a pain. But nice if you're just using a little bit of it. Um, so. Would I say that this is an easy palette to use? No, it's not. It's not easy to use unless you're quite light handed and you know what you want to do. If you're going for colours that you, you know, if you're going for a look where you just want like a wash of colour, um, beautiful. Um, Axis does transfer if you've got hooded eyes, so does Untamed and All Stars. So you do need to take that into consideration when you're doing a look with this and maybe use a setting spray. So guys, I hope you found that really, really useful. Let me know how you're getting on with your palette and I will catch you all later.